And so, as uh, Sugi and I uh, spent some time on uh, this, uh, this mountain uh, side uh, facing uh, Mount Fuji, and uh, after we had finished uh, eating our uh, magic sulfur, uh, sulfur cooked eggs, uh, we uh, went back to the uh, parking lot where the bus was, and uh, when we were there, uh, I had to go to the toilet. Now, one thing that struck me as I was in this uh, uh, this very popular tourist area, just filled with uh, tour buses and tourists, uh, mainly Japanese tourists, but a lot of international ones as well, was uh, the signage. The signage was entirely in Japanese. You don't find this in Korea. I mean, of course, you'll find a lot of Hangul, but it's everywhere, but you'll find a sort of bilingual approach. And one finds this too in, in Japan, but not nearly as much. So it's not uncommon to see these signs entirely uh, in Japanese. Now, there was the, um, the international uh, toilet sign, the little, uh, little uh, uh, man-woman icons, but that was pretty much it, and that was sort of sequestered away. And then another thing I noticed in the uh, washroom was uh, the sinks. They were very old-fashioned. Again, in a popular tourist spot in Korea, you'll find this tremendous urge to sort of make things modern. In Japan, uh, people, uh, despite Japan's reputation for being so technically, technologically cutting-edge, there's a tendency to just uh, use old-fashioned things like uh, 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 tasks with handles. Uh, they incidentally work a bit better than those ones that you hold your hands under, uh, which work uh, a good 60% of the time. Um, and uh, then we were back uh, toward Tokyo through a uh, traffic jam, and uh, we arrived uh, in uh, the downtown area close to uh, uh, Ginza. And uh, uh, downtown in Japan, we were confronted again by this, this phenomenon of English in Asia. But uh, whereas in, uh, in Korea, uh, there's just this absolute, well, actually throughout Asia, I mean, you can go anywhere, Beijing, uh, Phuket, uh, uh, throughout Indonesia, uh, throughout uh, uh, the Philippines, obviously, uh, and be confronted with a lot of English signage. But as I said earlier, in Japan, you don't tend to really find it as much. It does have that sort of off, sort of amusing quality to Westerners of, uh, of a real mixture of uh, influences. Here we see uh, a, a French, uh, I guess a French sign. I don't know what exactly it says. C'est bon? C'est bon? But uh, you'll, you'll find this sort of uh, mixture of influences, just the way that if uh, Westerners uh, suddenly started using Japanese or uh, the Korean alphabet, they'd get things very mixed up and just sort of go for sounds that would sound very jarring to a native speaker of Korean or Japanese. In any case, we uh, walked around the Ginza area, and another thing that struck me about it was just how empty it was. It was fantastically empty, considering that we were there on a Saturday night. Now this was early in the year, and I think it was just after New Year's. It was also a couple of years ago, so this was just when the uh, the financial crisis was still uh, causing big reverberations through the economy. Uh, but still, you know, downtown on a Saturday night in Tokyo, uh, one wouldn't see a uh, wouldn't one wouldn't see a major street like this in downtown Seoul ever. Uh, but uh, one gets this feeling in uh, Japan uh, that people are just more into uh, turning out their lights early, uh, retiring early, perhaps, I'm not sure about that, uh, and uh, just being a little more subdued. And uh, apart from the, um, the emptiness of the streets, uh, there uh, were... Uh, 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 empty shops. We uh, went to a couple of uh, of these big department stores. We went to the Matsuyu Ginza, uh, which would be sort of like uh, the Shinsegae Bekwajam in Seoul, and it was pretty. Uh, it was it wasn't empty, but it, there was a very light crowd there. And this was only ten o'clock on uh, Saturday evening, and uh, uh, so you can see around. It's just a, a kind of uh, empty interior, or very lightly populated interior shoppers. And um, then uh, uh, we uh, 
uh, went out again and we wandered up and down uh, Ginza and found a lot of stores that were closed already early on a Saturday night. Uh, their shutters down or just their window lights out. I'd say that at least 50% of the stores on Ginza were not open uh, on the middle of Saturday night. Something, once again, you simply would not find in Seoul. And uh, when we looked up the, uh, the side streets just off Ginza, they were completely empty. They were completely depopulated. And one thing that you have to understand about Asian cities is this is not the function of side streets. Side streets are not like side streets as they are in Toronto, for example. They are just smaller big streets. They are smaller streets with a lot of shops and a lot of restaurants on them. But this one was completely depopulated. Then, after leaving the Ginza area, we were back to Shinjuku, and here things were very lively. Uh, Shinjuku is sort of like the Myeongdong area uh, in Seoul. It's just crammed, filled with signage. It's crammed, filled with people, and it's crammed, filled with full. It's crammed. I shouldn't say crammed, filled. Crammed full of of entertainment, ranging from uh, music and electronic sales to uh, uh, basically Japanese uh, adult. Uh, entertainment. And uh, here people were just uh, everywhere. Uh, the place was uh, packed, it was lively, and uh, we walked around this area for uh, quite a while until we ended up at a, uh, a temple and a small park. 